Hello, welcome to the Natural Medic Adventures. I'm your host, Craig, the Natural Medic. On this episode, we're going to talk about layering and its importance in keeping you warm, happy, dry, safe, etc. when you're out in the outdoors. Now, there's several things to consider when you're talking about layering. Now, number one thing is think about the weather. Get a good weather forecast before you go out so you'll know which clothing items you need to pack. There are basically four main pieces of layering and they can vary depending on what area of the, the uh, world you live in, the time of year, and things like that. So, the first thing to think about is your base layer. Generally speaking, when it comes to uh, fabrics, you want to go with something that's going to be wicking, does not absorb water, if I can say that, and keeps your skin you know, dry and comfortable at your base layer. So you want to avoid cotton. The phrase cotton kills, you probably heard that a million times if you watch any other backpacking videos or listen to backpacking podcasts or outdoor podcasts, cotton kills. The reason they say that is because cotton, even though it's a natural material that is, that is grown on farms, it is comfortable to the skin. However, when it gets wet, it absorbs that water and takes a long time to dry out. And wet skin is not comfortable skin. And additionally, if it's cold out, the wet and the cold is not going to make you very comfortable. So it's best to avoid those type of fabrics when you're out there selecting your outdoor clothing. First thing I'm thinking about is a base layer in the winter time, fall, early spring. I'm in Texas, so it does get cold here. It was uh, in the upper 20s this morning when I got up. It's now um, reaching the 40s pretty soon, and by the end of the day, it's going to be in the 60s. But if I was going to go out hiking, I would definitely pack different layers to keep me warm to adjust. This particular layer is from Starter, and there's a million probably different brands out there and a million different places to get your information or to get your information to get your clothes from. I'm not going to list all that out. I will, however, put links to all the products I talk about in the description below. You can check those out for yourself. Now, as far as pants go, pretty much the same material as the top here. This is a polyester with spandex blend, the spandex to give a little bit of stretch. Same thing with the pants here. These are just some hiking pants that I picked up. I have some other ones that are not really name brand. They're Wranglers that I picked up, I believe, at uh, Walmart. But you can get them a lot of different places, and they're very comfortable, and they're not very expensive. If you want to get more expensive, you'll be my guest. But you really not you need to do that. But these are very comfortable. And in the wintertime, usually, I'm going to wear hiking boots. These are Keens with a waterproof membrane in there to uh, give me a little bit more warmth on my feet. Trail runners are okay most of the year, but in the wintertime, I'm usually going to switch over to hiking boots. That's just my personal preference. Now, as far as synthetic type of underwear, a uh, brand I like a lot, I wear a bunch of different brands, but the brand that I like is called Equipo, and you can get those a lot of different places. I got these at Kohl's, but you can get them other places throughout the, the interwebs, and I'll put a link to those below. But the nice thing about those underwear, without spending too much time on that, I like the boxer brief style, it's just less chafing, and the synthetic material, of course, helps wick away uh, sweat and things like that, because you are gonna sweat, even in the coldest times when you're out there, you're gonna sweat, and you wanna feel comfortable. If there's additional need, it's a little bit cooler, or planning on being a little cooler, I might go with a um, long base layer over, over the top of that, under my pants here, to add a little additional, just a little bit additional warmth, but it's also mostly for helping control moisture on the, 
on the leg area. Now your next layer, you can do this a number of different ways. I chose this particular fleece. I saw this fleece at, I think I picked it up at Ross for not very much. And the nice thing about it is it's a mid-weight polyester fleece. It does have a pocket in there and hand, uh, hand pockets. It goes on top of your base layer to provide some additional warmth. This particular weave of polyester is not going to be very windproof, but it should provide a little bit of wind resistance if I needed to do that. The nice thing about this style, I have a hood, of course, I can put on my head for additional warmth, and I can sense that down. And if I'm getting too warm, or I'm not warm enough, I can adjust the zipper. Additionally, I have a place to store any small items in here and a place for my hands if I needed to warm my hands up. Okay, mid layer. And you can go anything on this that you would do, but it's to provide a little additional insulation when you're out there and it's a little bit cooler. Now your uppermost layer, before we get to the, the rain shell type layer, is going to be some type of a heavier jacket, probably a puffy style jacket. This particular one is from Mountain Hardware. You don't have to go with that brand or a, uh, a well-known brand. You can go with some of the cheaper alternatives that you get a lot of the uh, department stores or online, and they will probably work just as well. This particular one, as you can see from the puffy nature, is insulated with down and down has several advantages and some disadvantages let's talk about those so down number one advantage is it's very lightweight and provides a lot of insulation for that lightweight nature that it provides additionally because it's lightweight and it's easily to easy to compact down can compact into a smaller space and that's nice. The thing about down that's not as nice is it tends to be more expensive than a synthetic comparison. And if it gets wet, it doesn't insulate usually at all. So that's something to think about. There are some down, um, there are some down blends out there or down treatments where there are some of the companies are treating it down with a water resistant to make it a little bit better against repelling water and staying warm. But if it wets out, it will not keep you warm. Okay, another alternative you might want to check out is a synthetic type of jacket. This is also a mountain hardware and it's reversible. But it's a synthetic. You notice it doesn't loft up quite as much. It's probably not quite as warm as my down one just for comparison's sake. But the, the, the nice thing about a synthetic is it's inexpensive compared to down. It will still insulate when it's wet and generally it's less expensive. That's something to think about. I think I thrifted for both of these jackets <laughs> at a thrift store so it didn't cost me too much. And you might try that as well. Some of your local thrift stores or places like that you might be able to get some really good bargains. But you can also find synthetic or down type puffy jackets online, name brand or not, for not too much. Now another thing to think about is your rain shell. This particular rain shell is from Frog Togs. Now according to the paper that it came with here, it says excellent wind and rain protection in a stylish jacket, built tough, designed to last. Breathable waterproof and wind resistant fabric. Machine washable, PVC free design. Lightweight, net weight 12 ounces. It does come with a nice little carry bag right there. 12 ounces is not very much. You can put this over all of your other layers. Let me put this one back on for a second. And I can show you that. The advantage of 
having a rain jacket or a rain shell, which you always want to take one, even if it's not going to rain in the forecast, because if you don't take it, that's when it will rain. But you can put this over the top of your other layers to provide a... Manufacturers will say waterproof. However, eventually, no matter how good the rain jacket it is, whether it's, whether it's a $25 Frog Togs, which this is, or a several hundred dollar Gore-Tex or other type expensive jacket, eventually the rain will get through if it's exposed enough. The idea is that this outer layer provides two things. The main thing it's providing is it's reducing the amount of water that will come in to your layering system. And that design usually means if it has a membrane in it, which this one claims to be, I've not actually used it in the rain just yet, but it was inexpensive and compact, that's why I picked it up, and it fits over all my other layers very easily. That moisture from the rain or snow or whatever will not penetrate the jacket initially, and whenever you sweat, your sweat will come out as a vapor and go through the little holes in the jacket, the little tiny holes. That's the idea of your waterproof breathable membrane. Additionally, because of that membrane, no matter how breathable they try to make it, it's still going to retain some body heat. And that's going to add some additional warmth to your system. If you're feeling cold, you can always put that rain jacket on and it'll keep more of your body heat inside of your layering system. Now, if you don't want to go with a rain jacket, Usually a more inexpensive way to go is a poncho. This is also from Frog Togs. It's basically a poncho is a tarp with a hood and buttons on the side for your arms. Let's try to put this on. We'll talk about some advantages and disadvantages of it. So as you see, a poncho covers over your body. You can see even with very little wind blowing, that's a disadvantage already, is that the wind can blow it up, but it is very uh, compact and lightweight. I carry this one usually in my day pack because it's inexpensive. If it gets messed up, it's just a, an emergency poncho. I have my arm through the wrong hole here. <laughs> um, just an inexpensive a rain cover. The advantage, of course, is that the back of it can cover over your backpack or other gear that you may have on. So it's providing some additional waterproofing or rainproofing from weatherproofing, whatever you want to call it, to your gear. So that's an option. Like I said, the disadvantage of it is it's this particular one is an emergency poncho, so it's pretty thin. So brush and heavy things like that along the trail might tear it up if it's used a lot and the wind can blow it up. Now lastly, something to think about is some protection for your hands. Now if you want to keep your dexterity of your fingertips, you can do fingerless gloves. These I believe I also thrifted for <laughs> and they keep my fingertips exposed, but the majority of my hand is warm. They are a synthetic uh, fleece with kind of a, that's probably a synthetic leather type palm that gives me some uh, grip on there. I still have dexterity with my fingers to do camp chores or whatever. And if they get wet, according to the instructions, all I have to do is take them off, wring them out, and put them back on, and they'll still keep me warm when they're wet or damp. And the last pair I have here is from North Face. These are just some fleece gloves from North Face. They do have another synthetic type palm for grip. And these are supposed to be wind wall gloves, so they block the wind. Now they will probably get wet and absorb the rain, but that's okay. The last thing to protect yourself additionally, a hat of some sort. You don't have to get a fancy one like this. This is from Smart Wool. 
probably pick this up at REI sometime. I don't really remember. But that will keep the top of your head warm. So, all in all, that's layering in a nutshell here. If you got value from this of any kind, give me that thumbs up. Appreciate that. Thanks for your attention and watching the video or listening to the podcast. If you are watching the podcast, I will put a link to the video in the description. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. Have a great day. See you on the trail.